Okay, so warm welcome everyone. It's June 21st, it is solstice, summer solstice, halfway through this year. And this is known as the day the sun stands still. So coming from the Latin word uh, stis, which means to be, to be still. So inviting you to find a place to be still right now. Um, and I like to see anytime I'm receiving a, a Dharma talk or teachings uh, from the Buddha, I like to see it as a practice. So really inviting you for the next probably about 15 minutes or so to settle into a comfortable form that works for your body. So you might stay seated, you might lie down. If you're feeling restless, you could walk for a few minutes. And there's no need to, to look at the camera or the computer if it feels more accessible for you to tune in. Having your eyes um, away from the computer, please do so. So really invitation to make yourself comfortable. And want to welcome uh, Zoe in. We're just getting started. Okay, so um, I think probably when we're talking about you know the elements found in in nature and in ourselves. So we've got the earth element, the water, the wind, and the fire. Um, I always think about the earth first, and I think about where I am as I'm giving this. Um, these sharings, these teachings, and I'm on the territory of the uh, Muncie, Delaware, Oneida, and Chippewa, the Thames, and I'm right near the Antler River, um, which is a beautiful river that has a couple of forks that's shaped like an antler, antlers. It's so really a gift to be on this territory, and um, just want to honor I'm a guest here, and it feels more important to say that today than ever, given it's um, a day in Canada where we honor uh, Indigenous peoples and their teachings. And yeah, just feeling grateful. I started my day at 5.30 this morning uh, at a sunrise ceremony in the park. And part of the ceremony was uh, lighting a fire and each person went around if they wanted and offered uh, prayer into the fire by offering two of the traditional medicines of this area, tobacco and uh, cedar. So I was thinking about the elements all day, and uh, now I'd like to take some time and just explore those with you. And before we do that, given that um, the teachings I would like to share are teachings that have been passed down to me through a long lineage of teachers that goes all the way back to the Buddha. And one common thing that you might be familiar with is, is taking refuge. And so there's three things we take refuge in in Buddhism. First, we take refuge in, in the Buddha or in the awakened nature within all of us. And then we take refuge in the Dharma in the teachings, in the way things are, and I would say in this whole path of awakening, which I think is what we're attempting to do here is, is wake up. And then the third thing is, is us. We take refuge in the group, the community, Sangha, from the word, um, the Pali word like truth seekers. So we're seeking truth together. So I'm um, just giving honor to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And I want to name just a couple of teachers that really influenced this talk tonight for me. Um, Joanna Macy, who you might know, uh, a wonderful teacher and uh, environmental activist. Leslie Booker, Susan Harris, and my mentor, Pascal Leclerc, who's also connected to True North Insight. And the other teacher is the Earth. Um, I'm schooled in the ways of the earth daily. So we all know this word mindfulness. We hear it all the time now. It's seemingly um, part of kind of pop culture, which is wonderful. But the question I often ask myself and those I work with is like, well, what are we paying attention to? What is it? What are we asked to be mindful of? And this is laid out for us in the Satipatthana Sutta. So sutta meaning like a thread, and there's all these threads that make up the teachings. And in the sutta, the first one, um, the Satipatthana Sutta, the first foundation is the foundation of the body. 
So I find that interesting that the Buddha felt it was important to go to the body. He didn't say go to thoughts. He didn't say go to external things. He said, go, go to the body. And within these teachings um, on the foundations of the body, so the first foundation of mindfulness, we've got the primary elements. And I'll just quote from the sutta. It says, in this body, there, are, there is the earth element, the water element, and the fire element, and the air element. So how do we take this from like an intellectual understanding that, okay, yeah, my body's made up of earth, my body's made up of water, I feel temperature, I feel fire, I feel wind and my breath and the air element. How do we take that from this intellectual knowledge on paper that was passed down orally for centuries to an embodied knowing? And I think one way to do that would be tonight is to practice the practice of the elements where we're gonna move through the four elements, um, recognizing some traditions like yoga recognize a, a fifth element of ether of, of space. But for tonight, we're gonna stick to the, the four, what's known as the primary elements. And if you think about it, you know, I think of it as like, um, these things are crucial. They say without eating, I think we can last up to about three weeks. Uh, without water, three days. Without heat, maybe three hours. And without air, even less. I think about three minutes. So we know that um, we are these elements and we cannot survive without these elements. So we could say um, in one way, you know, the body, seeing the body as nature, seeing the body as earth. And my one of my teachers, um, Josen, from the training I just completed, he always said something that stuck with me. He said, um, you know, earth, recognizing like the earth body as earth, recognizing this earth body I'm in right now, or this water body, or the air body, or the fire body, and seeing myself as this flowing um, collection of components that make up um, the elements. And I know this seems quite, I, in one way, quite obvious and, and maybe um, quite straightforward, but I would say in our kind of dominant culture, we don't often see ourselves as nature. We even kind of refer to it as, oh, we're going to nature versus like, I, I, am, I am nature. I am made up of these elements every day. So we could say in one way, um, that you know these bodies are like a microcosm of the world right the macro and the micro and one way to look at this is through the the three marks of existence that you might know that often get uh, spoke of from the buddhist teachings and the first mark is anicca and so they say there's these three things that are just the characteristics of this human trip this is the deal and one of them is a Nietzsche, which you, you might have heard of before, the idea of impermanence, that nothing is permanent, that things are constantly changing. And we see this so much in nature. I think of the line um, from, from Pema Chodron, you know, you are, you, are the, you are the sky and the rest is the weather. And how we often liken the changes that we see in the weather to ourselves. And perhaps if I was to, um, you know, check in with kind of what weather pattern you feel like right now, it might be completely different in an hour. So looking at our internal weather um, may help us to recognize the impermanence of, of this experience. And from that, I have often felt um, a bit of relief <laughs> knowing that, okay, everything changes. If, if things are gonna keep changing. Um, so a Nietzsche, this idea that um, nothing Nothing is permanent uh, inside or out. And maybe there's no big distinction between the two. And then another way I think why I wanted to share this practice with you tonight is because um, I've realized times in my life where I have um, haven't been able to take care of myself if I was struggling with um, anxiety, with depression, with um, in, the, in the early years, misuse of substances. I cared less for the environment. And one day it hit me when I was just gonna throw a bunch of um, compost out and I'd take my lunch to, to school that day. 
And I was like, oh, when I care less, when I'm not able to care for myself, when I'm not able to practice self-stewardship to myself, I don't take care of the earth as well. And that was a real, I've never forgot that. It was like 25 years ago when I realized that. And recognizing as I steward myself and all the elements within me and make sure I get clean drinking water and I get um, nourishing food and I breathe in as clean air as possible and I try to ride my bike more. Um, I'm also caring for the earth. And so it's this, it's a real, I just think this connection. And as you might know, the teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, he describes this as like interbeing or inter are. You know, there's, we are just made up of these elements. And I think of, um, I think it was the Taoists, their bootstraps theory. It says everything is connected to everything in every which way. So everything is connected to everything in every which way. And if things are connected, and if we feel connected, we might feel a sense of belonging. Right. If we don't feel we're so different from everything else, that we're made up of these elements. And that brings me to the second mark of existence, um, the second characteristic, um, dukkha. So the idea that when, I don't know about for you, and maybe over the last few years, this real sense of at times feeling isolated, at times not feeling connected, um, creates suffering. And I'm, I'm my day job, I, I work in the field of psychology and there's an expression that says a lone monkey is a dead monkey. And the idea that if we do not feel connected to everything else, and we don't have that embodied experience of connection to, to nature, uh, to ourselves, to all our relations, then it's going to create suffering, I think, for, for most of us. So one way to maybe help ourselves feel more connection, more belonging is, is, is through this practice of, of honoring the elements within us and around us. Okay, so the third mark of existence that I think relates to this topic tonight is the idea of anatta, of, of no self. And I know that has always confused me a bit in Buddhism, but I try to think of it as Nothing exists on its own. You know, everything's connected again, like Indra's web. So the idea there's no um, separate self. And I think through this practice of the elements, we can start to grasp that concept. So I just want to quote um, Joanna Macy here. So she says, recognizing the relationship we have is not a separate existence. This opens our heart to the precariousness of life. The body is borrowed, it comes together in this changing process, and we will return to nature. This can feel so natural. Yeah, so through this practice, we're looking at these three marks of existence, Anicca, Anatta, and Dukkha. And I was uh, reflecting, I mentioned earlier, I was at the sunrise ceremony this morning and there were kids there. And I watched this mother bring her two old children up to the fire and teach them how to put the tobacco and the cedar in the fire. And I was just like overjoyed to see this, um, these little kids up at 5.30 in the morning. And I thought about this other quote I wanted to share by um, a Senegalese conservationist and his name's Baba Diom. And he said, in the end, we will only conserve what we love. We will love only what we understand. And we will understand only what we are taught. So we're only gonna conserve what we love. And so I think again, by connecting with the elements within us, seeing them you know, playing out within us and around us, perhaps that brings a sense of gratitude, a sense of connection, and a sense of understanding that might inspire us to care for the earth more. And for some, um, you know, for some that might mean activism, for others that might be planting a garden at the community garden plot, you know, whatever it is. So before we move into a practice, um, I just wanted to give a little uh, summary of each of the elements and a couple of things that I felt were important. And maybe just taking a pause there, you know, it's a lot of 
information and maybe if it feels okay to check in. You might notice parts of your body connected to the ground. You might notice any parts of your body supported by a cushion or a chair, maybe a bench. So the first element I want to mention is the earth, the sense of grounding. So your earth body meeting the earth. And so this includes everything that we can touch, you know, our body right now, our flesh, our bones, the bone marrow, the hair, and also all the, all the things outside of us, the ground, the rock, the trees. And so even right now, maybe just bringing your attention to your teeth and noticing the hardness of the teeth. Or if you bring your attention to your hands, even noticing the bone, <clears throat> excuse me, the bones in your hands and your fingers, really connecting with this inner structure. And if we went deeper into the into the bones, you know, we'd find the minerals and the calcium. And all those minerals and calcium are also in the rocks and in the seashells. <clears throat> so another teaching I've received from Thich Nhat Hanh that I always appreciated was the idea of looking deeply at what we're eating. And we can use eating meditation as a way to honor this connection to the elements. So you might think back to your lunch and I'm remembering I, I chopped some carrots up and, you know, looking at them and thinking at what point is this carrot something that's outside me? And then at what point does it become me? And then at what point does it pass through me? Um, so recognizing that, again, we take in these elements, we make them our own, and then they move on. It's the impermanence of, of all things. So your earth body meeting the earth. And then the next element I want to discuss is often known as the air element. Sometimes it gets referred to as the wind element. So your air body meeting the air. And this refers to the breath, to the wind that moves us, to all movement. So it's involved in emotion and osculation. So maybe right now, just noticing your breath, noticing, taking in fresh breath, fresh air, bringing energy to your cells. And you might be able to notice the qualities of your breath. Is your breath short and shallow? Does it feel rushed? Maybe your breath feels slow and spacious right now. So knowing your air body. And then that brings us to the fire element. So that element is especially associated with today, the solstice. And from this perspective, we could think of it as they are also our temperature. Right now, do you feel warm or cold? What's your capacity to digest not only food, but experience? So we could think of it as our temperature and also the temperature around us. And I like to think of the fire element also as that ability to, to transform, if that's transform food or transform ideas into action. So this idea of the fire element moving through us, and you might be able to notice right now other parts of your body that feel warmer or cooler. You brought, brought your attention to your feet or your hands. Does the temperature change? Enjoying the fire element. And then lastly, that brings us to the water element. 
your water body meeting water. So we can think of this as all the water that moves through us. But right now it's also the blood, the urine, all the sweat, tears. And we could see the water as like a binding element. So the example I always hear is, if, you know, you put water and flour together, we get dough. And it also allows us to have all the cells moving through us. So you might feel right now if your eyes feel dry or they feel wet. You might notice saliva. You might be aware of blood pumping in and out of the chambers of your heart. And maybe tomorrow or maybe tonight when you take a sip of water, just recognizing that water's been around for a long time and now that water's within you. And again, thinking about this idea of, you know, conserving what we love, I think about the, the water and how do we protect the water if that's the water we drink, if that's the water in our lakes and our rivers and our ocean. So right now, maybe taking a moment to notice any, any water within you, moving, flowing, nourishing you. So we've got the air, the earth, the fire, and the water. And now I'd like to move into a practice, sort of support predictability. This will be about about 20, 25 minutes. So finding a comfortable form and if it feels appropriate, you're also welcome to light a candle in honor of the solstice tonight, longest day of the year, sun. And if a candle isn't something that you want a light, you might also just connect with something in the natural world around you that represents one of these elements. Could be anything from a potted plant to a glass of water. Maybe it's a wood table. And knowing at any time in the practice, you could go back to that object as a way to resource yourself back to center. So I'd like to open this practice with a collective intention, recognizing mindfulness isn't just about where our attention is, it's also about our intention. Why, why are we here? And this is an intention that I've modified from the work of Buddhist teacher Pema Children. So you might keep your hands where they are. Some people like to place the hand at the chest or the abdomen. Other people like to bring the hands together. But feel what, see what feels most supportive for you. So may this practice help us to awaken to our basic good, our basic kindness, and our true nature. May we practice with loving kindness and compassion towards ourselves, others, and the planet. We dedicate the fruits of this practice to all beings, to all our relations and beyond, recognizing we do this for not only ourselves, but for all beings on the planet. So in a moment, I will guide us through the elements, but maybe taking another check-in with your posture seeing if there's anything you could do to support wakefulness, any little micro adjustments that would help you to feel more at ease. And then deciding if you wanna have your eyes open or closed, it doesn't matter, whatever feels best for you tonight. Let's we'll start with the earth element. Maybe noticing the ground beneath you. Maybe noticing the parts of your body 
that are making contact with the ground. Might be the floor, might be a surface chair. And if it's available, noticing any sensations that arise from that contact. Your body meeting the ground. From the outer layer of your skin into the deep, deep marrow of your bones. It might be available to notice your spine, your spine that holds you up, gives you length and structure. For the next couple of moments, as best you can, connecting to the ground, any sensations that arise from that contact. Right now, maybe notice where your attention is. It's wander to thinking. No big deal. Minds wander. As best you can with a sense of kindness, we offer a child or a puppy. Escort your attention back, back to your earth body, meeting the earth. And if you're not feeling grounded right now, you're not feeling settled, connected to the ground, that's okay too. We could notice that. All experience is welcome here. Now, when you're ready, releasing attention from the earth element, reestablishing attention on the air and the wind. And get curious if you can notice your breath. You might notice a place in your body where the breath feels alive and vivid where you can feel the sensations of breathing. Maybe beneath the nostrils, feeling the air come in and out as it touches the upper lip. Maybe you feel the breath more in the chest or the abdomen. You can always take a hand there if that helps support you to stay present. And maybe you feel the breath somewhere else. And as we explore the earth or the wind element, you might also be able to feel air, wind on your body. 
Maybe there's an open door or window. As best you can, attempting to have an embodied experience. You notice you're thinking about the elements. Maybe the mind's off in the future or the past, remembering or planning. If that's the case, come back when you can. Reestablish and gather your attention perhaps another moment or so, connecting to any rhythm of air flowing, moving through you, within you, and around you. Now, when you feel ready, releasing your primary attention in the air and the wind, and reestablishing your attention on the fire element. For some, you might be able to notice your temperature, hot or cold. Maybe there's different parts with different temperatures. Maybe the torso feels warm, digesting a meal. You might also notice the external temperature that might be impacted by a fan or an air conditioner. Maybe we notice temperature from touching something around us, making contact with our clothes or a blanket. Or perhaps on the East Coast here, we can still feel those rays of the sun. And on the West Coast, the midday sun this longest day of the year. Your fire body, you in fire. And then when you feel ready, releasing your primary attention from the fire element and reestablishing your attention on the water, the water that moves within you. Here you might notice your mouth feels moist or dry. Maybe there's the wetness in the eyes, moisture.
And as best you can, connecting to this ebbing and flowing of the water within us, constantly changing, circulating, entering and leaving the body. Your water body, knowing water. It might also interest you to be aware of the blood within you. Blood that moves throughout all the organs, from your toes to your brain. You might be aware of all the fluids that allow our joints to move. And also the fluids that allow the mind to think, to imagine, and create. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your water body meeting water. Now for the remainder of the practice, allowing the inquiry to contain your entire body from the top of the head to the soles of the feet, the outer layer of skin, to the deep, deep marrow of your bones, your entire body here and now. front of your body, the sides, the back, you might choose to anchor your attention on sensations that arise, linger, and perhaps pass with all these elements moving through us and within us. For some, you might choose to anchor your attention on the sensations of breathing. Breathing in, knowing you're breathing in. Breathing out, knowing you're breathing out. When you get caught up in story, hooked by content, see if you can step back. Take a little more spacious view. Come back to the first foundation of mindfulness, the body, here and now.
If your attention's wandered, you can begin again. And they say this is a practice of a thousand beginnings. Begin again, come back to your chosen anchor, perhaps sensations arising in your body. Maybe you're choosing to anchor on sensations of your breath. Perhaps you've picked a different anchor. The anchor isn't really important. It's the quality of attention, the quality of care that we bring to the anchor. An invitation to begin again. Now for the final moments of the practice, an invitation to orient your attention to, to sound or to sight, whatever might feel more supportive for you. Perhaps you begin to take in the soundscape. Sounds that are near or far. Sounds deemed pleasant or unpleasant. Might be sound in the room you're in or perhaps outside. Maybe you choose to connect to the sense door of sight, taking in all the colors and textures all the objects made up of the elements. As you orient a sight or sound or perhaps something else, I'd like to close with a short reading by one of my favorite poets, a lover of the elements, Mary Oliver. It's called On Meditating, Sort of. Meditation, so I've heard, is best accomplished if you entertain a certain strict posture. Frankly, I prefer just to lounge under a tree. So why should I think I could ever be successful? Some days I fall asleep or land in that even better place, half asleep, where the world, the spring, the summer, the autumn, the winter, flies through my mind in its hearty ascent and its uncompromising descent. So I lie like that, while distance and time reveal their true attitudes. 
They, they've never heard of me and never will or ever need to. Of course, I wake up finally thinking how wonderful to be who I am, made of the earth, the water, my thoughts, my own fingerprints, all that glorious temporary stuff. So as we begin to close with a closing dedication, see if there's any movement your body wants to make. You want to move your limbs or shake your body. You might realize you need water or another type of movement. Take your time. Maybe you just feel like being still. And again, for the closing, you might want to have your hands at your chest or your abdomen. Some people bring them to the heart. And maybe let your hands rest on your body. So may all beings that are suffering today due to war and violence, illness, substance misuse, poverty of all kinds, neglect, relocation, climate change and loneliness. May they be free from suffering and the roots of suffering. May the wisdom and compassion of all beings increase now and in the future. May we continue to open our hearts and our minds to work ceaselessly for the benefit of all beings in the planet. May all beings be safe. May all beings be healthy. May all beings know their true nature. And without hindrance, may we be a benefit to all beings and the planet. Perhaps beginning of this new season, taking a moment to set a personal intention in these next precious summer months here in the Northern Hemisphere. And then finally, a dedication of merit. So I'd like to offer a collective dedication. And you might also be interested in thinking about personal dedication, recognizing the energy of coming together, sharing these teachings and the practice. And we could dedicate the merits, the energy cultivated. It might be dedicated to one person in need may be dedicated to a group of people far, far away. Or maybe we dedicate the merits to the ocean or the lake nearby. This is a dedication from the Buddhist teacher Mushin Akita. May our practice benefit the many beings, oppressing none, exploiting none, creating more happiness and well being, and promoting the causes of true happiness, well being, and sustainability for all. Thank you for your practice your time, wishing you a nourishing, safe, healthy, peaceful summer.